All right, guys, I did it. I did it. I've pushed a 120 frames per second stream to Twitch through OBS and a capture card, and it looks really, really good. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Did you just finally get your hands on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or S and you really want to put it through its paces and show your community the goodness that you're seeing on screen? Normally you can't do that while streaming. You're limited to 60 frames per second, but I've found a way to push 120 frames per second stream to Twitch and have it show visually on the receiving end of the stream. Hostiles are contesting B. Braga. All zones are being contested. So I assume you know a little bit what you're doing. But if you do have questions, please make sure you ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything that you have. But the first thing that we need to do is set our source appropriately. And by source, I mean our console. And this will also work if you are a PC streamer. Just ignore all the stuff I'm saying about capture cards or anything else. We're just going to go into video settings right here. Make sure that you're at 120 hertz. Uh, I believe on PlayStation it has to be 1080p. They don't do 1440p on the PlayStation 5 for whatever reason. Um, and obviously you can't do 4K 120 through a capture card. So that's all you need to do on the console side. And then the rest is over on OBS. All right, so looking at OBS, there's only a couple things we really need to do to make this work. First thing is the main settings. I'm going to output, make sure all your stuff is correct. Out of all of my testing, I have found that this setup here with look ahead unchecked, max B frames at four has worked the best for this use case. Uh, traditionally, if you were going to have four B frames set here for Twitch, you would have look ahead checked. But I, I, we're going to have to find somebody way smarter than me to, to explain why it works better this way. But I know it does. Also, a note, if you do not have an RTX card, if you have a GTX card, knock that down to quality. All right, and uh, that's it for the output screen. And then video, obviously quite important. Let me stop the replay buffer so you can actually see how I changed... The frame rate so common SPS values is what you're typically going to work with and then you just change it to fractional put 120 over 1 that's it I'm downscaling from uh, 1080p to 936p which is the new hotness we recently discovered awesome for twitch divisible by 8 and 16 1664 by 936 it looks fantastic on the stream okay and f as far as OBS that's it that's all you need to do then you want to go into your capture card if you're using a capture card set it from default to custom Change your resolution to whatever you want. I, I play, and for the input going into my capture card is 1440p. So I just keep it at that, even though I have a base canvas of 1080p. It's a personal preference kind of thing. I think it makes for a smoother encoding process. You could leave that at 1080p just fine and be just fine because you're passing through. Your, your capture card has passed through, so it's all right. Uh, video format, I use uh, YUI2, NV12 is just fine. Chances are you won't even see XRGB unless you have an Avermedia Live Gamer 4K or a Magewell card or a 
Elgato uh, 4K60 Pro, but that's actually a little bit of a lie because it, while it, uh, the 460 Pro or the 4K60 Pro shows it, it's actually emulated and it's not even worth the extra bandwidth that it takes. So NV12 or YUI2. 709 partial, that's it. But the main part that we want to talk about here is FPS. Match output FPS. That's going to match your capture card's output frame rate to the output that OBS is set at. Um, instinctually, you might want to go highest FPS. That actually doesn't work because that's saying to the capture card, use the highest FPS that you're capable of. This particular card is capable of 240 frames per second. We don't want that. It creates jitteriness because it's fighting against the OBS settings. So you want everybody to get along, hug, shake hands really amicably, and this is it. The result will be what you've been seeing spliced in through this video, but I know some of you may be thinking, but Matt, you can't show us pre-recorded video that you've edited into a video and expect us to believe that it's accurate. You're probably scamming us. You're probably right, Timmy. So let's go look at it in real time. This is my VOD. You can go down into the corner, blow it up here. The right corner, you're seeing that I'm at 936p 60 frames per second. Well, then if you go down to advanced, advanced video stats go up to the upper left, you will see when I play it 120 frames per second. And it looks real, real nice. See, it's in my Twitch band, my my Twitch video producer. It's all you're all seeing this in real time. I've also tried this in Facebook, and YouTube. They both will accept the signal at. They'll accept your stream at 120 frames per second, but what they do with it is completely different than what Twitch does with it. And it shows in the quality. Uh, Facebook, I, it's hard for me to test because I'm not part of their level up program and I'm no longer a partner over there. So I'm limited to 72030. And they downscale that on their end. It's not even downscaled in OBS. So it looks really, really bad. YouTube, on the other hand, looked great only if I was watching on the desktop or the web browser. If I opened the mobile app, it would just, it would, it would artifact. It would look horrible. I've, I tried two ways. I tried variable bitrate, where, uh, YouTube will determine the quality and give it to the viewer, depending on what they're capable of on their device. Um, so I set it to like 30,000 bitrate because I have, uh, gigabit upload and download. And it worked fine, but the mobile app was destroyed. I even tried using the new 1440p mode in in YouTube, and that was actually even worse. So what I'm thinking is this is related to something that uh, Kotaku published in September of last year. Uh, just a, a brief blurb that I'll have a, a link to in the description. I'm talking about uh, how NVIDIA was saying... Twitch is going to enable 1440p 120 frame per second streams in the near future. Um, and it talks about the AV1 standard and everything like that. But this could be part of that. That could be part of the reason that this is being accepted. I know they're not using the AV1 st uh, standard yet, uh, but I, I know they're working on it. Something's going on behind the scenes because the bitrate, I kept my bitrate at 8,000 and it still looked really good sending 120 frames per second to it. Um, 
just sending it double the information it still looked it still looked great so I, i'm excited to see what happens in the future in the which looks like it was probably going to be the near future and it'll be nice for twitch to get a win it'll be nice for twitch to have a, a leg up on specifically bitrate and video quality because that's one of the spots that's always lagged behind its competitors um so it'll be it'll be really interesting to keep an eye on that and i want to know your use cases and how it worked for you and if you watch a stream on a high refresh rate monitor like if you came to my stream and i'll always be streaming in 120 uh, going forward just to continue to test this and see how it lasts and see if I can create any problems and you know uh, see if it it works it's sustainable but if you come to my stream and you and you have a high refresh rate monitor and you watch my stream I want to know how good it looks it doesn't look even better because I haven't watched my own stream on my high high refresh rate monitor yet um, because I use <laughs> I can use that one to game on so um, I'd love to hear what you guys think and how it works for you. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and until then happy streaming.